Welcome to a healthy bite. You're one nibble closer to a more satisfying way of life, a healthier you, and bite-sized bits of healthy motivation. Now let's dig in on the dish with Rebecca Huff. It's Rebecca, and today I'm here with Sean Saluki of Nature's Way, and I've been dying to talk to you, so um, I'm just going to jump right in with my questions. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. All right. Um, so first, I was reading a little bit on your website, and I saw that you had gone on a trip to China, and that's kind of where you started getting the idea for this. Can you tell me a little bit of the backstory, how you decided to start this business? Sure. So I've been in the consumer packaging business the past 20 years, and I was originally bringing in a lot of products, houseware products from overseas and um, various different countries, uh, mainly in Asia. And about three to four years ago, I kind of was tired of doing business without having an in impact in the world in some format. So kind of my passion for the environment, along with other things, led me to go to overseas. I had found a specific item, which was this paper towel, bamboo paper towel that you can use each sheet up to 100 times. That was kind of the one item that got me into the business. And I sourced it, I brought it, used it, loved it, and slowly just decided to get out of the housewares business and go into something that would you know, have an impact in the world at the same time doing business. So kind of got in that way. I was not as environmentally friendly as I am today. So I would have to admit I was probably one of those people down the line in the past where I would uh, say, oh, recycle, forget it. Someone else will do it. Not a big deal. Now I really understand and have passion for what's going on in the world. So. Right. Or like, oh, I think a lot of people, I even heard someone say this. I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm just one person. But just one person, you know, times how many people on this planet. Yeah. So, so is the paper towel that you're talking about, is that the... It's like a, it's a paper towel. It's priced like a paper towel, but it works like a cloth. And it's really amazing. So it's, you know, bamboo and uh, a lot of great benefits of bamboo. You call it a paper towel, but it's not really paper. Correct. It's we call it, yeah, exactly. We, we call it a paper towel only because at this moment, people still can't relate and understand unless you're saying it's a paper towel. Right. But it's not a bamboo. So you're kind of just mentioning to them that it's similar to what would be out there in the market that people would use. This. Just okay. That. And so how do people reuse this? So say if someone's using their bamboo paper towel and it gets dirty, then what? So basically, they wash it in the sink, it rin rinses off. So we had a huge um, a demonstration at, in QBC Japan. We're very, very, very strong in Japan right now with this item because they love bamboo out there. And so the demonstration, they poured soy sauce, ketchup, and literally you just rinse it right in the water and it just comes right off. Uh, you just squeeze it, dry it, put it on your counter and are able to reuse it because bamboo comes from a, a source that it's actually antibacterial in nature. So you don't see that item become molded or anything like that. So right. uh, using it, they're not going to use it a hundred times, but at, you know, it, you, it's been tested up to a hundred times, but people even use it 10, 15, 20 times. They love it. It's saving you know, using less water and so many different attributes to it. Well, I have to tell you, I used mine to um, clean up coffee the other day, and I was like, oh, this is going to be ruined, but it wasn't. Exactly <laughs> I was exactly. so impressed. I was really impressed. Um, so you're talking about the product is made with bamboo, and I know you chose bamboo because, as we know, it is a sustainable, you know, resource, and grows back really quickly. And I noticed that on your website, you pointed out that it's not the kind of bamboo that pandas. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you wanted to clarify that? Sure. So uh, we get a lot of questions about bamboo. Um, we have consumers that ask us many different things. One is, 
is it soft? Uh, really, like we have bamboo bat tissue. They're like, really, you'd use this? Uh, is it soft? And I always tell them, well, what are you using currently? You're using paper that comes from paper from a tree bark. So why would bamboo not be equal or better than what you're doing? Right. So they're like, oh, I get it. And then the second thing is people ask is, uh, isn't this affecting the uh, panda's food source? And so bamboo has thousands of different species. And the ones we use are specific to the ones that are not utilized um, by pandas. It's not a food source for them. So the ones that the pandas eat do not have any relationship with the kind of bamboos that we eat. We're actually forest FSC certified, which means we're forest protected. There's a specific standard of how we handle and how much they can cut at a given time and in a particular acre of land or whatever it is. So, um, yes, so we needed to specify that because it is important to us too not to take a food source of a specific um, species of pandas away. Right. Have you ever visited where the bamboo comes from? Have you been there? Yes, I have. If you ever need anybody to go check it out, let me know because I'm obsessed with bamboo and China. I've been oh. there twice for pleasure, not for business, but I'm willing to go for business if you need help. So, honestly, I would love it. Come on down with me. I'm going in December and I'd love to have someone come with me. So, come on. <laughs> yeah, um, my daughter and I, uh, well, I've actually been studying Mandarin Chinese for years, but uh, about a year ago, my daughter, well, it's been actually two years ago, my daughter and I started having to commute and she's 11. Um, so we were commuting a lot and I said, well, we're not going to waste this time. We're going to learn a language. So I forced her to learn Mandarin Chinese with me. And so when we went to China in April this year, she was able to communicate. So I thought that was really good. I know she's going to grow up and do something big someday because. Amazing. <laughs> Right. right. I love China too. That's um, awesome. So I wanted to ask you um, a little bit about another product that you have, which is the compostable waste bags. And I know that there's a lot of confusion when people hear compostable and they hear biodegradable. Um, and then I know that those two words mean different things. And also, can you tell me how you intend for people to use these bags? Sure. So biodegradable and compostable are very similar. The only difference is that compostable, when, when you are bringing in products that are compostable, you generally need to be uh, BPI certified. So it's an agency that certifies you for making sure that you've been tested, that the product is 100% compostable. Uh, biodegradable doesn't necessarily mean that. So um, biodegradable means it may uh, degrade a hundred percent and may, you know, so it's not a for sure thing. Compostable is a hundred percent sure certified. So for example, my bamboo floor wipes are biodegradable. Um, you know, they will degrade. It could possibly biodegrade a hundred percent. It could possibly be done in a year to six, nine months to a year possibly longer depending on the environment. Composting is just a definite, you know, 100% compostable if it goes through the particular um, realms of mechanisms that it's supposed to go through. So that's just the only difference between the two. Okay, um, so I'm curious though, compostable is regulated and biodegradable is not, am I correct? Uh, biodegradable is regulated as well. You can't just claim biodegradable and, and you know, go through the process and sell it and people realize it doesn't. Uh, so biodegradable has some regulations as well, but not as stern as a composting uh, Gotcha. Okay. So with the compostable bags... Um, people can keep these in their kitchen and anything like food waste, um, paper, anything that's going to break down, they can put in these compostable bags, right? Correct. And they can carry this compost out. These compostable bags, though, are not for just trash that's going to end up in the landfill. Is that right? Correct. Okay, good. I just wanted to clarify that because 
I think I, I see some people buying these and I'm not sure they know exactly what to do with it. So um, I, I, I just wanted to clarify that these bags are for compostable, like food matter and things like that. All right. For example, like the compostable pet waste bags we have, um, you can bury it in the, you know, the backyard. You can, uh, you know, uh, flush it down the toilet. Uh, you can take it to a composting facility. Compostable. So if you use these compostable pet waste bags, you can flush those down the toilet? You can flush them down the toilet, providing they're water soluble. Uh -huh. so if it breaks down in the water, you can. There are some that you can't. Uh, you just have to check the packaging to see if it allows you to do that. But That's yours just, can? Mine can, yes. That is impressive. Well, I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Okay. Wow. I am like blown away by that. So dog owners can actually use these and pick up their dog waste and flush. Correct. Amazing. Correct. Okay. That's, that's a new one on me. I am just blown away by that. Okay. But I did have other things I wanted to ask you about your products because I've been using your bottle brush and your cleaning the dish brush. I love it. The aesthetic of it is absolutely beautiful. I really love natural stuff. So I, I, and I'm completely a declutter person. I don't like to have a lot of clutter sitting around, but I have the in my, I have it in a little jar next to my sink because it's just so beautiful. So kudos for that. But um, I read that they're, the handles are made from bamboo and the bristles come from a special type of plant. Can you tell me about this plant? Sure. So this is, it comes from an agave plant in Mexico um, called Tampico. It's Tampico is a fiber. Um, it is very, very strong. Um, super absorbent, picks up liquid very well, um, has a lot of attributes, cleans very well. Uh, Tampico fiber mainly is, comes out from Northern Mexico in, in the deserts and that's really where they, it's been around for hundreds of years. They've used it for ropes and uh, various different kinds of items. Now they use it for uh, bath items, they use it for some baby sponge items, and then they use it for cleaning items. That's mainly what it's used for these days. And but so it's fast growing, renewable, sustainable? Yes, it's a grass family, fast growing, renewable, sustainable, uh, and as I mentioned, super absorbent to liquid. So when you use it, it picks up so well, it cleans so well that people are always blown away. And our goal is also not to have any chemicals on it. That's why we don't lacquer it or have it have the even the bamboo base be shiny. But um, the bristles compared to plastic bristles are night and day. Not only you're saving the environment, but it just works so much better than anything else. It does. I have to say, I had used an eco-friendly, and I'm using air quotes for those who are just listening to the podcast and not watching the video, but I've used eco-friendly brushes before that were made with bamboo handles, but had nylon bristles. And I'm like, you know, okay, can't we find something a little better than this? But I was really impressed, and I agree with you. They do actually clean better than nylon bristles. I was really amazed and I gave one to a friend of mine and she, that was the first thing she said, oh my goodness, these brushes are amazing. So I was really impressed with that product. Um, I noticed that your website has um, a seal that I haven't seen before. It said it was the confidence in textile seal. Can you tell me what that means? Sure. So there's a company out there in the world called OEKO. Uh, TEX. They're the agency that controls uh, textiles, especially for uh, babies, for people who use it on their you know, face or body, and also for cleaning. And this controls, um, so when you have that certification con confidence in textiles, it means that it's been certified and controlled to be sure there's no harmful chemicals, or any material that is harmful to either the earth or you know any issues with emissions and as well for people. So once you have that, then it means you are clear of any of those harmful chemicals. 
That is impressive. I had not seen that before, but I knew it must be something really great. So, um, and so what's the process for getting, do they come and inspect your, how do they go about giving you the seal? So you have to send uh, the items to third party facilities for testing. Nice. And testings are controlled by these agencies. So they're, um, you know, verified and preferred testing agencies. You send the samples out, usually takes, you know, quite a bit of time, similar to BPI certifications for composting. You know, composting, for example, they might have it tested for six months before they can get back to you because they have to make sure it uh, composts. So right. similar situation goes with these. They have to run many tests. It takes maybe three to six months before they can give you the certification. Wow. Okay. So it's not just some random thing that you just get done overnight. It's for real. It's a real deal. Exactly. Okay. I love what you're doing for the environment and for all of us who love to clean. Um, where can people find your products? So we are on Amazon. We're on walmart.com. We are in Albertsons, Bonds Pavilions. We're doing a lot of things with the Safeway Albertsons group. Uh, we are in some of the Bed Bath & Beyonds. Uh, we are in several different natural groceries uh, all across the nation, but mainly I think uh, online they would have a good chance of seeing most of the variety of our products. And we're coming up with a lot of new items mm -hmm. as we speak. So month after month, we're going to have new items added. Our website is going to be a direct to consumer website soon. So consumers are going to be able to come straight on our website and place orders and get them, get the items shipped to their house. Oh, that's exciting. Um, well, hopefully you can share some links with me that I can put in the show notes for this episode. So if people want to find your products, they can get them quickly. Would love that. And one other thing I wanted to mention is we just signed an official partnership deal with Kathy Ireland uh, for uh, Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be really exciting. She's a phenomenal person. She has a lot of influence out there and we're going to be working together to create some items under her brand, which will be Kathy Ireland Clean mm. by Nature's Way. So we're excited about that as well. Yeah, I did just see that. I read that yesterday and I thought, wow, that's, that's really big. So obviously you're doing something right. I did have one question when I received my box, because you sent me a box of goodies and I shared them. Um, and I, I wanted to get other people's opinions. So I did share them and everyone gave me great feedback. They really love them. The one question that I have to ask though, do you plan to in the future package your products with less plastic? Because I noticed like the sponges came in plastic. Correct, hundred percent. So we've we've had. Uh, I'll uh, break it down for you in a couple of uh, important questions people have had, which is one of the ones you just mentioned right now. So uh, what we tell people is the first thing we had to do is get um, the products to be environmentally friendly, and it was really hard to do product and packaging all at the same time. Mm -hmm. we that and now currently with our research and development team we're on our way to have 20 um, for 2020 to have our packaging also be environmentally friendly whether if it's going to be compostable packaging recycled packaging or minimal packaging we're working on that whole broad assortment and yes we're gonna every single one of our products is going to change into environmental friendly packaging Nice. Well, that's good to hear. I'm really excited. I was, I was a little nervous about asking you that question, but I mean, your products are amazing. So I think that would just take them over the top. And another thing we're doing also is we are, for example, our bath tissue rolls have paper, um, you know, the rolls in the center of it or the paper towels. Those are all getting transferred also to be bamboo. So now you're not going to have any paper out. There. you know it's just going to be clean bamboo all across the board that is wonderful so i love that your company is taking those extra steps to make it really really environmentally friendly thank you awesome well i love your product and i want to just make sure that we put everything in the show notes so if you're listening to this make sure that you go and check out like all of the details for this episode where you can get your stuff um so you can start cleaning and getting everything more environmentally friendly and sean thank you so much for coming on i really really am impressed with your company and you know the products just they 
they stand alone. I mean, they speak for themselves. So I really hope that people will run out and get, you know, get these for their kitchen and, and the paper towel. I don't want to call it a paper towel. I want to call it like unpaper towel or something. Correct. So we got to come up with a new name for it. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited and I appreciate you having me on uh, on your show and very exciting and if uh, I'll take you up on the offer if you were ever in China let me know or if you wanted to come I'll take you out and actually show you and you can have a whole segment on uh, you know the facilities and uh, the bamboo uh, I would love to China is one of my favorite places so I mean I just have a special place in my heart for China and all things Chinese and everything that they do there I mean it's just um, I'm amazed at things that they can grow there. Like I've seen stevia growing and I think it's just, a, um, there's so many resources there and I love um, when companies are doing something like this, that it's the environmental friendly aspects because I think China needs that because there are some parts of China that I, I think, um, you know, need to be cleaned up a little bit. So. Yeah, 100%. I tell you a so, couple of the things that come up uh, for me as well is um, people ask why China, why not here in the US? And I tell them, look, first of all, in order to uh, create jobs in the US, um, I have to have a competitive business. So I'm actually creating jobs by growing my business and adding more employees and helping that out. If I was to manufacture in the US, probably I wouldn't even be able to have half the employees I do today. So we are actually creating jobs by having a company out here, but they also say, how is it eco-friendly if it's coming out of China? And um, I tell them, I say, well, first the bamboo land in China is humongous. It's, it's enormous. And we just unfortunately don't have that capability here in the U S but my goal is not to change a city or a state my goal is to change the world the earth so whether whether if it comes from china or brazil or wherever it's from if we can make a change at the end of the day to help the environment really doesn't matter where the plants are grown right. so and people once i tell them that they kind of understand what the whole mission about this is so. And I think the good that you're doing with these products offsets, you know, the fact that they, you know, the products grown in China. So, you know, I mean, I agree with you. You can't grow bamboo here like it can grow in China. So, and as you said, China is learning to grow uh, and become environmentally friendly. And that's going to help the earth a lot because of the amount of people they have there. So things are changing there. And we're influencing that a lot, which is good. Right, which is, the, that was my point kind of, is that it, it takes people who are um, wanting to manufacture environmentally friendly products to start making that change there as well. It's not just, you know, um, producing a bunch of products because we know a lot of people can do that in China, but these are very good quality products. Correct. And, and we want to bring a... Uh, we don't want to bring a premium price to the consumers. We want to bring a competitive price that would be close to conventional pricing that they're currently buying. So if even someone is not environmentally friendly, they might make a decision to make that change because it's not a much higher premium to pay for. Right. So it's not so far out of their price range. Correct. Correct. Right. Thank you so much for the work you do and for being on the show. I really appreciate it so much pleasure. Thank you for having me and I appreciate it as well. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Please write and review so other people can learn about this podcast. Find out more about sleep, hygiene, eating healthy, tasty recipes, zero waste lifestyle, and lots more on thatorganicmom.com. Help us spread the word. Be blessed and stay healthy.